Good morning, everyone. It's uh, a bit strange meeting together, and yet we are not seeing each other in person. Um, but I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been working so hard to make it possible so that via internet and this modern technology, we can still worship together at different homes. Now this morning, I'd like to uh, share with you through the Psalm 91 in our worship. And uh, if you can, uh, please keep your Bible open and, uh, and I'll there are slides showing up on the screen, but uh, in case if you are uh, following us with your phone or um, you're too far from the screen, uh, I think uh, re reading your Bible, that would be great. Now, if you were to make a confession of your faith, how would you say it? You might start by saying, I believe in the God of the Bible, who is the creator of the universe, and then go on and on. Or probably, you will recite the Apostles' Creed. Now, the psalmist begins this psalm with a very clear statement of his or her faith. And uh, he describes in very, very vivid language about the God he believes in, and what he is like. And when his life is threatened in different situations, that the God he worships is the one whom he can trust completely. Now in this psalm, he used different images, um, concrete images, objects like Fowler's snare, shooting arrows, Pestilence, lions, cobra, shield, fortress, to convey the, you know, the, um, the, 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 the scenarios that he or she might come across. And yet, some of these situations are indeed very dangerous scenarios. And yet, is God is going to see him through. Now today, when everyone globally is driven by the fear of this deadly dangerous virus, COVID-19, I believe this psalm offers everyone, especially Christian believer, a much needed hope and comfort. God's children need not to be eaten up by the fear like those who do not know the Lord. For we believe the God of the Bible is the living God. So when we turn to verse 1 and 2, the psalmist said, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, in my God in whom I trust. Now firstly, please note the titles being used on the Lord, Yahweh, as the Most High in verse 1. And then in the second part, he used the word Almighty. Now Most High speaks of someone who is the highest, the greatest, he's unequal in his status. The Almighty speaks of the Lord's power and his might is the greatest and is unmatched. And what is this God to you, to the psalmist? He went on to say, this, the Lord, Yahweh that I that I believe in is a personal God whom I know intimately for this Lord is my God. Now 
So what it is like to be dwell in the shelter of this most high, almighty the Lord? He said, I can rest in the shadow of the almighty. Now, can you imagine a scenario of someone being caught in a gale storm or walking under the extreme heat of the sun? I'm sure the person will be so relieved to come under the shelter that he finds, for there is rest and safety. Now, this is the language the, farmer, uh, the psalmist is using to describe that when he comes under the shelter of the Lord, he can surely rest and be saved. For this Lord is my refuge, like a fortress, is utterly dependable. Where else can you find a better place for refuge or protection other than the Lord? Who can keep us safe from any possible attack on our life? Who can be any match uh, with the Almighty God? None. For the Lord, my God, is my confidence, my God in whom I trust. And then he went on and he said in verse 3 and 4, that the law delivers and protects him from danger. But he begins in verse 3, Surely, surely that express his confidence in the Lord. He said, This Almighty God will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Now, notice the images being used here are life-threatening situations. For example, a father's snare, a bird trap, which is placed there unseen, intending to catch you totally unaware. What about pestilence, plague, epidemic, or the pandemic that we are all facing today? But yet, the psalmist expresses confidence in the Lord, and he said, surely, the Almighty God will be our cover. <laughs> a picture of a mother hen protecting the young and the vulnerable chicks under her wings. For he said, He will cover you with his feathers. Now, even the invisible killers, like the pandemic, the Lord will save you from such harm. Now, isn't it wonderful, you know, especially as this current pandemic, uh, pandemic situation is affecting everyone globally. There is no safe place outside one's own home. That's why many governments in different countries are advising their citizens to keep away from large gatherings and to keep a safe distance of two meters for the fear of spreading virus and for their own protection being kept indoor inside his or her own home is the safest place surely this is the unusual time which calls for unusual measures and uh, the psalmist said Yes, ultimately, our best defense, ultimately, the one who is guarding us is the Lord himself. Well, do I need to go out? If I need to do the essential shopping, yes, I have to. 
and uh, but we have to take responsibility too and to be careful with uh, and follow the health guidelines laid down by the government for example keeping a safe distance or uh, when we come home to take precautions and wash our hands thoroughly and wash our hands frequently too but ultimately I think we Christian believers can express in the same way as the psalmist that the protection comes from the God in whom we trust and then he goes on and and described in verse 5 and 8 and he said you will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday now in verse 5 and 6 again he used concrete objects like the shooting arrows which can fly and attack you from a distance or the plague that comes through the air and they might even attack you while you are asleep at your most vulnerable moment many people actually were dying in verse 7 a thousand may fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand now in a po poetic expression uh, the Hebrew ways often double up to to reinforce the 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 the, 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 uh, the, the strong, right they use here but he said look even thousands may fall but it will not come near you meaning God will watch over you for you are the apple of his eyes now in verse 8 and he says you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked now there seems to be saying look when you are standing there the rest of the people next to you or you know sharing the same place are affected and yet God has singled you out he assures us that the Lord is watching over his people his own and by contrast in verse 8 the wicked those who are to those who are opposing God they will not escape God's righteous judgment can you see the contrast nothing can touch God's servant with without God's permission like Job right but the wicked for those who are opposing God they will never escape from God's righteous judgment because it will catch up on them but that's not the focus on this psalm and then he went on in verse 9 and 13 the following section the psalmist is and is encouraging us to experience the action of Yahweh in your life personally and that's why he starts with if you say or in some verse in some niv uh, version in my bible it reads if you make the most high your dwelling right so there's a conditional clause here if you make the most high your dwelling if you make god your refuge then in verse 10 no harm will overtake you no disaster will come near your tent now, isn't it wonderful we're encouraged to experience God in this 
most wonderful way in verse 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will tremble the great lion and the serpent. Now again, he's using images like angels, God's messengers to describe how God comes to your rescue through special agents. Sometimes could be human beings. Sometimes could be beings that comes from God himself in a miraculous way. Lions, strongest animal in the jungle. Cobra, a deadly snake. Now, these are life-threatening situations, right? Being attacked by lion, or being bitten by cobra, or being affected by um, uh, plague, ep epidemic, or the pandemic that we are facing today. But if you say, if you make the Lord your refuge, then God will watch over you. No harm, no disaster will come near you without his permission. And the end result is rather than being the victim, you end up being the victor in verse 13. You tread on the lion. Now, I can't imagine me overpowering a roaring lion. I'm so scared of a snake, but I cannot imagine myself standing on the head of a poisonous snake like cobra. Now, of course, the uh, psalmist is using this poetic language to express that not only our protection comes from God, and sometimes it's nothing short of miracles. Our victory over our enemies are assured by God. Now, when we come to the last section in verse 14 to verse 16, notice it is a change of speaker, so to say. From verse 1 to verse 13 so far, it's a psalmist making, uh, making a speech, making an appeal to his listeners or readers. But in verse 14, it is God who is, speak, who is speaking. In verse 14, God says, because he loves me, I will rescue him. God is making a pledge to those who love him. And he said, because he loves me, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, in these three verses, please notice God has made a promise to those who love him with I will six times I will rescue him I will protect him I will answer him I will I will be with him I will deliver him and honor him I will satisfy him and show him my salvation this is the extent of God's pledge 
to cover us with his protection and to rescue us of our present situation, whatever there is. Not only in verse 16, we can continue to enjoy our walk with the Lord with confidence, we can live a long life. Verse 16, God said, I will satisfy him or her with long life and show him or her my salvation. So after going through this psalm quickly, how are we going to understand this psalm biblically? Because sometimes, like good Christians, we pick up God's word and take it seriously as God's promised. That's fine, that's great. God indeed has given us many, many promises in his word. However, this psalm cannot be read as a as a as a guarantee to offer a blanket cover cover for our lives. I.e., God doesn't promise a no disaster life for any true believer, and uh, so. Please do not make the mistake of quoting verses from scripture and from this psalm and say, look, well, you know, I can go in, I, I can go into a line that I will not be harmed. Please, please do not, do not take that. In fact, the Satan is actually quoting this psalm in the temptation of Jesus. For example, if you look at verse 12, right, in the temptation of Jesus, Satan said to Jesus, he said, why don't you jump down from the top of the, of the temple for God's promise that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone and we know the answer don't we the lord jesus used another scripture to answer back now that has given us a very very clear um, example of how god's word may be applied biblically and correctly there's no blanket guarantee for a suffering free Christian life. In fact, the Bible is full of examples of godly people suffering for the sake of the faith. For example, in Hebrews 11, we read of a number of heroes of faith they stood up for God, and yet they suffer much in their earthly journey. So this psalm is intended to give us encouragement in times of difficulties. It points us to God when we are facing a life-threatening situation because we can trust in this almighty Lord as our refuge. Hiding in his shelter will give us rest. He is, in, he is de completely dependable. He's like a fortress. But he will be there when we call on him. Because he loves me, the Lord said, I will rescue him. Do you love the Lord? Do you know him personally? Is he your saviour? 
Are you a servant of God? If you are, you can take it to heart that this is what God said. I will rescue him. I will come to his aid. Now, how does God answer our prayers? Then it is something that we have to leave it in God's hand. The Lord is our God. He is not our servant. He remains as the sovereign Lord. And in verse 14, he said, I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. In verse 15, I will deliver him and honor him. Now, it makes it very clear that when we turn to God and as God's children, we have the confidence that our prayers are heard. But our prayers may not be answered according to our will, may not be answered according to our timing, may not be answered in the way we want. But we know that God knows what He's doing. It may not make sense right now, but we trust that in good time, God will help us to see indeed in, there is good sense in what he is doing. For the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11, they suffered much and they do not see the end result at this end of eternity. But when we reach the other side of eternity, surely all will be revealed. And when we look back, we thank God for the ministries of Isaiah, for example, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, right? And uh, so much so that in, uh, uh, in the transfiguration of Jesus, who was there? Isaiah was there. Now, so someone described it. Life is a bit like the needlework of the embroidery needlework. Sometimes when we look at the back of the embroidery, it looks a bit of a mess and it doesn't seem to make any sense. You don't see a good picture come out of it. However, when it turns round and view from the other side, you will see that what formerly a mess turns out to be a well-designed picture and every stitch and every color has its proper place. Now, in the same way, our life in God's hand can be just like that. God knows what he is doing. Every stroke, every bit that happens in our life is well chosen. And we can take heart for God is our refuge. God, the Almighty, the person that we trust, will will see to it, not only for this life, but for our salvation too. Now, and an example we can think of, perhaps, is like the life of Joseph. The Joseph in Genesis. Now, he didn't see the reason of his uh, being sold and being locked in prison and uh, they were life-threatening situation. One of his brothers wanted to kill him, but yet God kept him safe. And at the end, he was the one who was instrumental to save his entire tribe, his own family, his father. And from him and, uh, and uh, 
uh, God bless the Hebrews and the Jews living in Egypt. Another example we can look at is the person of Job. His life wasn't, you know, um, easy when the devil decided to lay hand on him. But yet, it's not without God's permission. And it, as it turned out, we read and we saw in his life that those who trusted in the Lord will be honoured. And our faith in God is not is not futile. Now, in the same way, I think in the New Testament, our Lord gave us this encouragement in Matthew 10 as well. And he said, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can, who can destroy both the soul and body in hell. Now that helps us to have a better or the proper perspective in life, isn't it? We are living in a very unusual time. And some may be scared by the spread of this deadly virus. Others may be worried about the disastrous impact, such as the loss of income or even the potential loss of a job or a career. Whatever circumstances that we might find ourselves in, it may be a life-threatening situation too. But Christian believers can take courage because of this psalm. For we can cry to the Lord and express our confidence in Him and say, God is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So is there a message for all of us today? I believe so. Firstly, individually and personally, we can take comfort when we are hearing there are panic cries all over us. You have, you have seen people panic buying. You can, you have, you have seen there are even people getting into fights over some toilet papers. You might hear stories of young people getting struck down by this, by this uh, virus. However, we can take confidence that God knows his children and he's watching every one of us. And even if we, God forbid, if we lose our life, then that is not the end of it. Because our end is assured. Our salvation is secure in Christ. And so do not get worried by, by this uh, pandemic situation. And secondly, I think we can be a source of comfort to others too. Because this is a crisis when people may be also wondering, well, where do I turn? Who can help me? Well, we can point them to God through this psalm. So, brothers and sisters, I think this is perhaps a very, very good time for you to share your faith. We are, most of us are told to work at home and uh, we are told to reduce the number of, uh, the, the number of times of going out. Now the 
of course, it, it is inconvenient. And uh, but the upside is, consider the time that you save by not traveling, by not stuck in a jam. Now, what do we do with these extra hours? I suggest we can turn to God in prayer. Praying for ourselves, praying for our family, and praying for others, especially for those who do not know God. For they do not know where they turn for help. But since we do, this is a good time. Perhaps use your phone, use your internet. Maybe you can offer your help and say, perhaps, can I pray and ask for God uh, to protect you? Now, I find that uh, this, especially in the time of crisis, people are quite, um, or should I say, are less um, reluctant uh, to hear words like prayer or help. You may begin by sharing in your personal way. Is that, look, in my situation, when I'm scared, I pray to God, and I know that the Almighty God is my refuge. And to come under his shelter, I can find rest, not only physically, emotionally, and spiritually too. Then you, you, perhaps you can begin to share your testimony, how God has been a source of comfort, how Jesus is your peace, how the Lord is your God. So, do you think we can do that? So I just, I just like to end with these uh, six words in verse 1. My God in whom I trust. May this be the inspiration for you in this week, for your life and for your witness and for your ministry in Christ. May God bless you and keep you safe.